Hi there, Lindsay from Prairie Fire here. Just wanted to give a quick thank you on behalf of the staff and board of Prairie Fire to the Composing Winnipeg class at the University of Winnipeg for working with us on this project and for conducting the interviews. As well, a big thank you to all of the authors who took time out of their busy day to be interviewed for this project. Just to let you know, this is a video series, so we will be posting more videos as well, or have already, depending on when you're watching this. So please check our channel for additional content, and we really hope you enjoy. On with the interview. So you are a Canadian novelist from Winnipeg, and apart from being an author, you also have worked as a freelance journalist and a book reviewer for places like The Globe and Mail, The Winnipeg Free Press, and Prairie Fire, and as a book editor for The Turnstone Press. As a novelist, you've accomplished quite a bit. Your first novel in 2008, Reading by Lightning, won the Commonwealth Prize for uh, Best First Book and the Amazon.ca First Novel Award. Your second novel, published in 2010, uh, titled Curiosity, was named a Quill Inquire Book of the Year. Your third novel, The Opening Sky, published in 2014, won the McNally Robinson Prize for Book of the Year. In that same year, uh, you were awarded the Engel and Finley Award by the Writers' Trust of Canada. And your latest work, Five Wives, published in 2019, won the Governor's General Award for English Language Fiction. Did I miss anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. That's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so where I want to start the interview is by learning more about your journey to get to where you are now. Um, when deciding your career path, did you always know you wanted to be a writer? You know, I would say that it was a secret ambition that was almost a secret for myself. <laughs> you know, I would call it more um, a dream that I never realistically thought that I would realize. So it's, it's something that suits me very well, that sort of, you know, fulfills my desires for myself, but it always felt very far away and out of reach. So I didn't really start writing until... I was middle-aged and uh, you know I guess I would I would sort of look at your question deciding on your career path and just say that writing is writing fiction writing literature is very seldom a career path for people because you don't make enough money at it so it's something right. that most people work at doing along with something else and it's really important to have that something else for a bit of financial security right so what were some people or influence that got you finally into wanting to become um, the author? When I talk about that secret desire, I would say it actually came from novels I read as a kid by Lucy Montgomery. Her, Anne was not so explicitly a writer when she was young, but, but Emily of New Moon, another um, Montgomery heroine, really was. And I think almost every female writer in Canada of my generation was influenced by those books. They were just huge. They made you um, think about interpreting your experience into language and how thrilling that was. And I think a lot of us identified with those characters. So for me, I think that was huge for me as a kid. Somebody else who had a big impact on me was Margaret Lawrence, because I grew up in the country. I grew up in a small town, Carberry, which is 30 miles from Margaret Lawrence's town of Nipua. And she fictionalized that town as Manawaka. And I remember being so struck that she could take the material of our ordinary small town life and turn it into such amazing fictions. And that she gave us so much about the interior lives of her characters. So I was very influenced by her as a young person. I studied English at U of W too. And uh, I would say I was influenced by her there. So, but you know, those were early influences. And, and as for what finally got me over the hump to trying, I think it was just that I was doing a lot of book reviewing and I sort of thought um, I was tired of it, you know, the 800 word limit, <laughs> reading other people's stuff. And I kind of just thought if I'm ever going to try, I need to do it now. So I did. Did you face any challenges coming into the writing industry at all? I think I had a couple of advantages because it is very hard to get your work noticed. It's very, very competitive. 
but I had been writing book reviews and I had a book review column in the Globe. And so when I went looking for an agent, people knew who I was. And I think that was a, a huge advantage to me. And then my um, first book won two very nice awards. So I think that um, for me, the challenge is, I don't want to minimize what they are because I know they're really huge, but for me, they were more interior, just in finding the confidence to do it and, and so on. Would you have any advice for any Winnipeg writers looking to follow the path you've made? I think um, a lot of writers, you know, ask me sort of for tips around finding an agent and so on. And I really try and encourage people to work on their craft, you know, to keep reading, to steep yourself in literature, because your product has to be, your, your, your book has to be very strong and very deeply felt to get attention. And so um, I wouldn't start trying to send stuff out too early. I think it's very easy to get discouraged if you get a lot of rejections. And so, you know, just as with say, uh, you know, somebody learning to play the piano, they don't expect, expect to, to play at Carnegie Hall in there with their first um, few years of lessons. And I think similarly, sometimes writers expect too much too early from themselves. And you have to do a lot of hard work at the beginning. And so I should say, even though I'm talking about um, the fact that my first book kind of took off quite well, I have two unpublished novels or two unpublished yeah. manuscripts from before that, that I didn't even try to get published because I just saw them as apprenticeship work. I knew they, they weren't good enough. I was, I lost interest in them eventually. Um, so I think it's a matter of really doing that apprenticeship work before you try and test the waters of the marketplace with your writing. I saw that you also got to select a few stories in the journal prize and the lodgy in 2010. Uh, what was that process like and what were things that you looked for when you were selecting? I tend to be drawn to work that has a real intimacy to it. Like I really love stories where the author sinks into a point of view, um, looks at the world through a character's eyes. And I'm also really interested in language that's used in fresh ways, you know, that, that sort of arrests me and makes me see the world differently. So those would be two things that I would be drawn to, whereas some writers on a jury might, you know, be more drawn to, to the action of a story and so on. Right. It's funny that you say that from reading your novels, um, reading by lightning and then five wives, I noticed that um, the stories of these characters are what really, really draws me into the oh. story as well. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess my question for you now is uh, from writing that your first novel to your latest, what has been your writing um, journey so far? Has there been a change in your writing style from Lily to the five wives? I would say there has actually. It's funny, I, I've asked this very question of other writers when I've interviewed them. I remember asking David Bergen and he said, it's the same old <laughs> struggle now as it was at the beginning. And for me, I think it's shifted in that I was very preoccupied with sentences when I began to write. And, and um, so reading by lightning, I think um, there's a, quality to the language that right that now I might be impatient with I think I, I care more about the pace and the movement of a story and I think to some extent readers have taught me that because I you know you read comments that readers make about your work and they they like to see a story that moves and so I think I'm more aware of that I'm more aware of arranging the elements of a story so that there's contrast from one page to the next and so on um, less interested in that gorgeous sentence than I used to be. So the Governor General's Award, uh, congratulations again for winning that. Um, my question for you is how did that feel, winning that award, and especially as a Winnipeg writer, what were your thoughts and everything going through your head mm -hmm. when you found out you won? Yeah, <laughs> well, it was fantastic, I have to say. My husband used, often used to make me mad because he would say, what you have to do is win the Governor General's Award. And I would be furious because I'd think, do you have any idea how hard that is or what a stroke of luck it is? So 
I, it was kind of funny when it actually came true. Um, and, and, you know, the, the Giller Prize, I suppose, is a bigger award in Canada right now, but the Governor General's has such a long history in Canada. And I remember when writers that I loved and admired, like I remember when Sandra Birdsell was nominated and, and how thrilled I was. And so it, it felt wonderful from that point of view. I also felt really lucky because this book, when HarperCollins acquired it, they bought it for 2020. And then at the very last minute, they said, we have a, a gap in our publishing lineup for 2019 and your book is very close to being ready. So we're gonna move it um, forward. So I got really lucky because in 2020, the Governor General's Award for the first time in about 80 years, they didn't do a prize because of the pandemic. Um, so I just feel so lucky that I was on board for 2019. And it, it was a wonderful experience. It was, you know, three days in Ottawa and lots of media and going to Rideau Hall for the big ceremony and so on. So it was really, really a special time. I love that for you and how at the beginning you didn't even know you wanted to become an author. <laughs> that to 2019, you winning this award. Yeah, well, it is very nice. And, you know, given that this was my fourth novel, you would think that by now I would have pretty solid confidence in my work. But a, a prize like that, I find it makes a difference. It's sort of like now as I'm working on my fifth novel, I'm saying, OK, I can do this. People like my work. And it did every day. It gives me more confidence as a writer to have won that prize. So I think aside from drawing more readers to your work, I think that's the, the ultimate purpose of prizes, I suppose, in the way they encourage writers. So. You've worked with Prairie Fire. I wanted to know what that experience was like and uh, why this magazine is such an important part for Winnipeg writers and Canadian magazines in general. You know, I, I was thinking about this after you contacted me and in a way Prairie Fire was really instrumental to my coming out as a writer or deciding that I was going to be a writer. Um, early on, I went in to visit the office and asked to talk to the editor Anders Taskins and I remember being very nervous it was it it just seemed to be so audacious to sort of say could I write but I went and pitched a few ideas to him for writing and he was so welcoming and I think that had a big impact on me so through the years then I ended up working as a um acquiring one of the fiction editing team we we would go through all the submissions every couple of months I ended up being on the board. I ended up being the judge of a contest and I have had a few pieces published in Prairie Fire. But I think Winnipegers should be very proud of that magazine. It has a very good name in Canada for um, publishing emerging and, and established writers. For 2021, do you have any writing goals? Do you have anything you're working on without sharing too much? It's true, some people are very, um, superstitious about talking about a work in progress, but I, I'm not terribly. So I'm at about page 200 in drafting a new novel. And um, unlike a couple of my books, it's not based in the past and it's not based on a real story. It's more like the opening sky. It's, it's a contemporary story. And uh, it has four characters in their thirties that <laughs> knew each other somewhat from high school. And it's, I'm just, really trying to take on the, the huge challenge, I think, to our consciousness of seeing our climate in jeopardy and what that means for human survival and how it affects individual characters. So in a way, it touches on some of the ideas that I dealt with in the opening sky. So. Oh, so that sounds great. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. Great. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much.